Hi there, I'm Debbie Davis and this is Mind Your Own Business TV. If it's your business, we're talking about it right here every week. And today we have a subject that's near and dear to my heart. It is financial literacy and kids. And I have two guests with me today. My first one is Rhonda Hebert. She is an assistant vice president and branch manager at Biddeford Savings Bank in the Kennebunk branch. Correct. And you also work with her. You are Chris Dwyron. You are a VP and a business banking officer at the Kennebunk branch of Biddeford Savings Bank. That's right. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. You know, I uh, do my banking, most of it, at Biddeford Savings Bank, and I was on the website, and I saw this little thing on there that said, we teach financial literacy to children, or something like that. And I went, really? Mm -hmm. Clicked on it, and had to find out more. I firmly believe that we have to do more in the area of teaching our kids about money, about business, so that it better prepares them when they leave school to go out into the world and to be a success. Absolutely. Sure. Before we talk about that though, let's talk about you guys. Miranda, how long have you been in banking? <laughs> I actually had my, my one of my first jobs other than scooping ice cream in the earlier years of high school. When I was a junior um, in high school, I took a summer teller position um, in New Hampshire. And that was back in the very early 80s. And since then, I have been in banking at multiple different banks um, in New Hampshire, credit unions as well, um, and have most recently been with Biddeford Savings for approximately 14 years. Fantastic. Yes. How about you, Chris? Um, I've been in banking for, it's been 14 years, and have been with Biddeford Savings Bank all that time. And for me, it was, uh, I was in college at the time looking for a summer job. It was an opportunity to be a, a teller at Biddeford Savings. I started there and realized it was a good place to work, and there were opportunities that opened up. I had the opportunity to learn more about commercial banking and uh, decided to go that route and um, have uh, been pretty much in the commercial banking side of things for maybe 12 of those 14 years. That's interesting. I worked at a bank as well um, in the 80s mm -hmm. and it got bought out by Key and, and we worked there in municipal lending. Very fun, mm -hmm. exciting part of the bank. Sure. Absolutely. But we are here today to talk about financial literacy and kids and Tell us what you guys are doing. You've got some kind of a course? Yes. Talk about it. Um, well, basically, uh, the bank uh, offers materials uh, from K through 2, uh, and it's a program called Saving with Mandy and Randy. And it basically introduces money to children by way of different coins. Um, it talks about how money is involved with pretty much everything you do in your life. Uh, talking about starting to save early and recognizing different forms of money. Um, my involvement has been more on the high school level. The name of that class is called How to Do Your Banking, and that really gets into the difference um, in banking products, checking accounts, savings accounts, loans, um, why credit is so important, and the ways to build good credit. Also gets into lending and the appropriate ways to apply for loans and is very inclusive um, when and it's did been it great. Start? Well, uh, my particular involvement, the bank has been involved with a company called Seamark who provides the materials and the bank pays for all of the materials and then helps facilitate the schools with the teaching of the programs. Um, when we opened our branch in Kennebunk about three and a half years ago, my kids were in the Kennebunk school system and believe it or not, one of one of my children, my oldest one, had to do a project, and they had to make a presentation, and she had no idea what she was going to do. About money? Uh, no, it could be anything. Oh, okay. So a lot of the kids talked about, you know, how to make the best pizza, um, uh. things like that. <laughs> um, and I need to know that. <laughs> <laughs> and basically, um, I just made the suggestion to her, why don't you teach the kids how to balance a check checkbook? And she's like, oh, I don't want to do that, Mom. Everybody will hate it. And I said, honestly, you'd probably be surprised. And from that point, she did the presentation. One of her teachers ended up contacting me and said, how can we make this bigger and better? Wow. Um, so that's pretty much where my involvement began. Um, and one of the teachers there 
said we need to make this happen. Since that time, the program has actually been, become part of the Kenny Bunk High School curriculum, so it is now a class. It is. Yes, that students take prior to graduation. That is fantastic. Now, this um, saving with Mandy and Randy sounds so cute. It is really cute. I myself have not taught those particular classes, but we have many employees at the bank that do. And basically, um, one of our employees goes in, they sit down with the kids, they bring them piggy banks, they show them all the different denominations of money and coin. Um, the teachers facilitate different activities where the kids start saving for things and we offer them the ability to open their first account and help them make their first deposit. And oh, that's cute. So it's, it's, that's cute. It is. it's a lot of fun. Did you ever have an account when you guys were young? Yes. Did you have a savings account? Sure. Yeah. yeah. I did too. Yeah. Yeah. Started at a young age. It was a very neat feeling to go into mm -hmm. the bank with your, you know, dollar and twenty six cents and your little <laughs> booklet or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and put your money away. But that kind of dwindles off, doesn't it? If it, it doesn't does. stay with the kids, I think through the school system. Mm. Well, you know, so much of it probably I bet we could all agree that it probably started with our grandparents. You know, our, our, our grandparents opened that account for us and, you know, they'd deposit their 50 cents and we'd bring our 50 cents and, and that's sort of how the story begins. And then something happens, I think, as, as we start going through our school years where it's not first and foremost in our mind. Right. Um, and believe it or not, in my opinion, banking has changed so much, you know, from the early 80s up till now. Everything is so technology-based, so the little booklets don't don't That's exist true. and you know all those hands-on tools that the kids had aren't really present anymore um, so now really if we want to show our kids how banking works we give them an iPad That's <laughs> and true. have them sign on to online banking and check things out right. or, or even Which a telephone. Which is the best way to do it. Yeah you know or even a <laughs> telephone so things have definitely changed the mechanisms are there they're just different. Well I'm talking with Rhonda Hebert and Chris Dryer. Dwyron. That's right. <laughs> yep. So sorry. And uh, Chris, now you are involved with the junior achievement end of things, right? Tell yep. us about junior achievement. Sure. So junior achievement is a worldwide nonprofit organization, and obviously on more of a local level. Um, there's a local board of directors. Uh, there's um, several in this state. Um, I do participate on the Northern York County Board. Uh, and the primary responsibilities there involve um, delivering the junior achievement programs, coordinating with volunteers, coordinating fundraising efforts. Fundraising is a critical element to be able to um, provide these programs. But bottom line, junior achievement as an organization um, promotes financial literacy, its work readiness skills, its entrepreneurship skills as well. And there are prepackaged curriculums or programs that are, can be administered to as young as kindergarten age students up through high school. And these programs um, uh, typically involve a kit, looks like a little suitcase. And in that little suitcase is all the material a volunteer needs to go into the classroom and teach the you know teach the curriculum and the curriculums usually involve five to six 45 minute sessions so um, as a volunteer I might coordinate with a teacher and say I'll come in once a week on a Thursday afternoon and we'll do that for five or six weeks until I've delivered the entire program um, and it's pretty interesting uh, obviously, the subject matter is different, you know, depending on the age depending level. Depending on the ages, right. Yeah, of course. Um, and in addition to that normal prepackaged curriculums for volunteers to go into the, the classrooms, there are a couple of other uh, pieces to junior achievement that I've been involved in. One is they do have job shadow days. The bank has invited um, students to come into the bank for a job shadow which is pretty neat um, in, in my experience volunteering with that. It's involved the kids doing some mock loan applications. You know, they can, they can pretend that they own a business and they're going to get a loan for a business and that becomes fun. They get a real sense as to um, all the pieces uh, that go into something like that. And uh, another fun thing that I've been involved in that's a junior achievement um, event is called the Titan Challenge. It's an annual event 
geared towards high school students across the state where high schools will send teams of three students, up to three students, to compete on a state level in a business simulation. And what that looks like is it's, a, it's almost like a game. I'm sure many, many of the kids view it as, uh, as a game where it's computer software based and these three students are tasked with running a business. They're, they're making a fictional product okay. and they get to set um, certain criteria such as um, building plant capacity, how many units do they want to produce, setting a marketing budget. Um, That's pretty advanced. Absolutely. So they have some time in their classrooms to practice with the software and then when the big day comes, um, they, there are different locations across the state where the high school students will come. UNE has hosted, University of Southern Maine has hosted. So we'll go there and my role or, or other um, volunteer roles are mentors for the kids. So you've got a team of three and each team of three should be set up with a business mentor or volunteer to help them, you know, me to share my experiences with the real business world and mm -hmm. oftentimes they know more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> we love it when that happens. <laughs> Well, let me ask you, Junior Achievement Now, I know that when I was in school, way back when, uh, we had it in high school, but I did not have any of it in uh, the lower grades. How frequent is this being utilized in the school? Um, it's really, it, that's, got, that's driven by teachers and volunteers. So um, the request to have Junior Achievement brought into a school or a specific classroom needs to come from either the teacher. Mm -hmm. So a teacher may um, catch wind of junior achievement from some source or maybe from a friend or a colleague who's brought it into their classroom and they say, hey, I want it in my classroom as well. So that teacher would go to um, somebody on the junior achievement board or, or, there's, or through the organization and just put a request in to say, I want junior achievement in my classroom. And then it's up to the junior achievement organization or, or a board to find a volunteer to I match see. with that teacher. And who can the volunteers be? The volunteers can be anyone who is passionate about financial literacy, these things that Junior Achievement stands for, teaching in general, sharing their expertise. But what if they don't know anything about money or Junior Achievement? They don't need to. They don't, and no. why is that? Because the, the, the kits that I referred to with the prepackaged curriculum, is so thought out, spells it out, you know, from A to Z, exactly what the steps are for you to be able to facilitate delivering that lesson. It's all spelled out for so you. So anybody who has the time mm -hmm. um, could actually do this. Sure. It's time, desire to teach, to be in front of students, uh, and, and it's certainly easy for a volunteer to spend some time reviewing that curriculum ahead of time to get comfortable with it. I love this. I totally love this. Mm -hmm. Now, you've got a guide that you bring, and it is how to do your banking. Yes. And you sent me a copy of it. Boy, is it evolved. It is. And, um, you know, there's, a, there's a te both a teacher guide and a student guide. Um, as I said, the how to do your banking is more on the high school level, so we've really uh, spent the most time with sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Mm -hmm. um, the program actually starts, and again, there's a lot of creativity on the teacher's part where they can take the items that are in the handbook and really tweak them to their own teaching styles. Um, in Kennebunk, when we first started this program, the teacher thought of the game of life. Um, it's a great they, game. It is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if anybody still plays it. <laughs> um, but that being said, what we did is the first part of the program, the students are actually charged with thinking about what it is they want to do for a career, mm -hmm. where they want to live, and they have to do some research and investigating. So, for instance, if a, if a student decides that they want to be an architect in Maryland, they need to find out what the average pay is for an architect how much it costs to live in Maryland, and they develop a budget based on rent. Um, do they have a car payment? Do they have insurance? Um, and what they do is, is they formulate a budget, and then the life game comes in where the teacher um, at this particular time handed them different life chips. Um, for instance, oh, you had a car accident on your way home from work. 
Oh, when so, life throws you yes. a curve. So how does that affect your budget and how are you going to sustain your, your living? Yeah. Um, is your insurance going to go up? Do you have enough money saved to allocate for those types of changes? Um, it would be really nice if our life just stayed on this nice, even playing field. Boy, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's not always the case. So um, there's some creativity that can be involved, or you can stick directly to the program um, where, yes, you talk about budgets, and then you talk about, you know, uh, one of the examples is a, is a pizza, and, you know, one slice dictates which parts of your life, and um, how do all of those pieces fit together so you can form an entire whole livelihood. Um, it talks about credit and the importance of making good decisions at an early age. Um, as you and I probably know, one bad decision, one late payment could follow you for oh, a good for seven years. a long years. time. <laughs> and you know, uh, the reality of it is that you know, when you get into junior and uh, as a junior and senior in high school, your mailbox gets filled with credit card offers. That's true. And all these things. So it, it's really. Um, bring to the forefront how important it is, not just because you get an envelope with a credit card offer to sign up. Yeah. Um, it's it's big. It uh, it's kind of cruel, actually, to do mm -hmm. to that age group because they're thinking, woo, I got a yeah. credit card, let's go. <laughs> yeah. And they're not even thinking about how to pay it back. Sure. Right. You know, it's, right. I have a year. Or next, and it next doesn't just happen in the mail. I mean, Mom we, will pay it. Yeah. So exactly. <laughs> Or we all know what happens at the register when you check out. I mean, those those retail clerks are very good at saying, oh, if you open a credit card today, you'll get 25% off. And and so begins the cycle of credit at a very early age. They still do it to me. I mean, and I say, no, thank you. Oh, and they get to whip out the benefits. So, well, if you do, you'll have this and that. And that's okay, thank you, but no, thank you. <laughs> oh, are you it does sure? Work are you sure? Because, you know, just, it's like, yeah. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, I'm looking at um, something in the manual here that you alluded to earlier. You've got to forecast your monthly income. I mean, this is this is interesting that you even talk about income before taxes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many kids react, you know, shockingly to the fact that if I make ten dollars an hour, you mean I'm not going to bring home ten dollars an, an hour? Oh yeah, it is. It's very shocking, and you know, part of that is is to also talk with them about. Um, how to use those pre-tax dollars for saving um, and the importance of making good decisions prior to the whole tax piece. We partnered with a financial um, investment advisors in Kennebunk called a company called Invest and we sort of expanded the whole piece of this financial literacy to talk to the kids about mutual funds and stocks and bonds and um, investing early. Um, it sounds like such such a big thing to think about, but um, we all see on the commercials, you know, twenty dollars at age eighteen can mean great retirement at some point, and and it's very true. So we talk to the I kids know, about that. I know. <laughs> and I always I say to myself, why didn't somebody tell me this before? I wasn't yeah. paying attention. Right, right. It's interesting too with the the taxes. Um, I volunteered, and I believe it was a second or third grade junior achievement curriculum. And I was shocked that at that level, um, I was teaching the element of paying taxes. It was a very simple, here's a business, here's the product it sells so that the business makes money, which then pays you, the employee or the worker that was right. making the product. And I was passing out money to them, okay, it's payday. And then comes the time where I slap on the badge of tax collector. Oh dear! And the <laughs> eyes light up. What do you mean? I have to give back some of that money. So, uh, so junior achievement is also covering that uh, at what I think is quite an early age as well. That is fantastic. And to be quite honest with you, that that's the part that actually I find the best learning tool is the kids say, "Oh," and they ask questions. Mm -hmm. A lot of them have family members or parents that that actually work in some of these lines. Um, of employment, and they go, oh, that's what my dad does. I didn't know that's what he did all day. And it, the, the conversation prompts such great learning tools. So oftentimes you think, oh my gosh, I'm never going to be able to, you know, fulfill 45 minutes worth of teaching time. That just seems like so long. Well, the conversation actually gets you probably through, you know, yeah. a, quor a quarter to maybe a half, if you're lucky, yeah. of that yeah. scheduled program for the day yeah. because you want the kids to participate. Yeah. 
they're making those connections right in the classroom. Absolutely. Oh, I just love that. I just love that. <laughs> now, when it comes to savings, are they really doing it? Once you're teaching it to them, now, for instance, in the high school, mm -hmm. and they're learning more about saving, are they actually trying to do it? I mean, a lot of kids nowadays in high school are working. Right. Are they trying to put nest eggs aside? Are they trying to put that, build that savings? Um, I won't say that that's first and, first and foremost in their mind. However, um, just by giving them a few of these tools and bits of information about different banking products and how to manage your money wisely, um, maybe they're not saving so much at the beginning. Right. But just the fact that they're learning how to manage their money and uh, picking different types of accounts that work best for them. Um, and when I say that, a lot of the questions come up about you know checking accounts. And we live in a debit card society. Um, nobody writes checks anymore. Everybody uses Hardly a debit ever. card. Hardly <laughs> ever. Mm -hmm. Right. So we talk a lot about um, you know, when you do open your first account, being smart about it mm -hmm. and, and keeping a register of those debit card transactions, the difference between debit and credit and what that all means. And um, th the kids are very interested. They want to know. Mm -hmm. They really don't want to make mistakes. They want to learn correctly. Exactly. And by providing these types of tools and information, um, I think we're doing them a huge service and letting them know. As you and I probably know, we got our first banking account from Gram Grammy and Grampy, yep. but yet when it came time to spend it, we really didn't know the best ways to handle that. That's true. Um, so this, it, it just plants the seed and um, hopefully helps them make decisions wisely versus by mistake. Yeah. Now Chris, in the Junior Achievement programs, do you guys go over uh, for instance, when they're teaching the entrep entrepreneurship end of it, are you going over where they get their initial funding? Um, yeah, that, that's, a, that's part of it. Uh, a lot of that entrepreneurship um, subject matter comes at the junior high or high school level. And there's all pieces to it. A lot of it is uh, real life example. You know, we'll We'll pick a, a well-known brand or well-known business, and part of the curriculum is talking about how that business got started. You know where that first money came from. Um, you know maybe it was. I mean, some of it is uh, they couldn't get the money from a bank, or, right. or you know it had to be Many come times, from. Yeah. It, absolutely, it came from a friend or it came from a family member who yeah. stuck their neck out and loaned me some money. Right. Um, and then lo and behold something that started so small or in the garage of a you know mom and dad's house you know blossomed into something so big so those are great stories you know with some real life companies that the the kids really i think find are we interesting. talking about microsoft here well that's yeah that's <laughs> coming to mind microsoft apple you right. know, those those type of companies sure and the kids can relate you know they're such well-known companies they certainly can mm -hmm. now let's talk about the day when the kids get to go to the banks Mm. to actually see what goes on there. That's probably my favorite part because we spend so much time talking about how things do work at the bank and um, last year we had, actually the last two years, we've had kids um, from Kenny Bunk High School. We put together an agenda for the day. The school buses them over to the main office of our bank and we spend a good four or five hours with the kids. They visit each one of our departments they see the inside workings of the bank. Um, their favorite part is to go into the vault. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, see, actually, what it's like to hold, you know, ten thousand dollars in your hands, and you know that makes them very happy. Um, you know, I have to say, to a, a young child, or, or even if it's in high school, to hold ten thousand dollars in your hand, mm -hmm. that they've done more than many adults have done. You well, know what I mean in that respect. Absolutely, and the interesting part is when you say to them, you know, what do you think you can buy with ten thousand dollars? Oh, the range of answers is is huge, and you and I both know ten thousand doesn't doesn't get you very much anymore. Not much, no. Um, but yeah, and you know, part of this is too is is to give kids a sense of reality about how much things cost and how long it takes to save that kind of money. Um, Again, you know, the, the younger kids think $10,000 can buy you a house and, you know, all of these wonderful things. And you and I both know you can barely buy a car. <laughs> um, so that part, 
their eyes, you know, open wide. What do you mean? You know, it, that's not enough. And, and it's not just the younger kids. I mean, the older kids have a, a and I hate to say warped, but a, a miscalculated sense of, of, of money. Um, so this truly is eye-opening. Well, some of the, the feedback that we have here um, in regard to um, going to the bank, one mm -hmm. person says, I like the fact that we went to the bank to see how they manage money and how the devices worked. And it was very cool to hold the money in my hands. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can't beat that, not at all. So you do this once a year? Um, well, again, depending on once a class, right? What the availability of the school is, and to be able to, you know, provide the transportation over to the bank and so on and so forth. It it, it definitely takes some organization. Um, right. But as I said, we've done it for the past two years with Kenny Bunk High School. Last year, we did it with Wells High School. Um, they had a group of students that came over to the bank and. Um, we ask them to prepare some questions in advance for each of the departments. Uh, they do a uh, question and answer with the president at lunch. We provide them lunch and their oh, that questions. that must be fun. Uh, it is. Yeah, their questions are all over the place from, you know, security issues to, you know, well, what do you, what do you give for bonuses, mm -hmm. um, if that even exists. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, there are wide ranges of questions, but they're all great questions and, um, it's exactly what we need the kids to do is to start talking about it and learning. Now, Chris, in Junior Achievement, do you have any field trips where you go to actual businesses with the kids? Um, I haven't had any experience with that. We've had, I mean, much like you're talking about the job shadow through the program uh, Rhonda's delivered, we've had job shadow days where we've had students from Biddeford come into the bank and do similar things, as Rhonda mentioned. Um, um, you know, one of the neat things we got a chance to do through the Junior Achievement Job Shadow was, as I mentioned earlier, the mock loan application. Right. Where they get to pretend they own a business and they're going to get a loan for it. Um, I would love to see that, fun. actually. Yeah. The kids have fun with that. It is, and the great part about that is, um, you know, Chris and I have both done some volunteering with that at the bank where kids come in, and it's sort of that middle-aged um, group of kids, mm -hmm. middle school kids, uh, you know, sixth through eighth grade, where they're trying to think about what it is that they want to do when they grow up, so to speak. Some of us are still trying to figure right. it out. <laughs> um, but that being said, um, it gives them the opportunity to see different careers and um, allows them to think about, oh, maybe I do want to take some business-related classes in high school, mm -hmm. or maybe I, I want to look into this type of a career, and what do I need to do to prepare myself for that? So it gives them a really early um, right. uh, focus sure. to start thinking about those things. Yeah, and even some of, the, some of the junior high and high school level programs that I've volunteered to teach, um, aside from actually physically going into one of the local businesses, we do a lot of real life examples. Here's this business, um, here's how it's operated, um, a lot of uh, exposure so they can see how different businesses work. Mm -hmm. And then we get into, okay, what kind of skills do you think you need to be able to be in that industry or in that line of work? Uh, and as Rhonda mentioned, it really kind of opens their eyes to the opportunities that are out there. In a recent um, junior, junior high class that I was teaching in, a lot of it was on career mapping. So here's some high growth career opportunities in science and technology. Um, and then, you know, we get into, you know, okay, you're in junior high today. What can you start doing today to get there, you know, and what courses or what opportunities or, um, you know, they may not realize it, but uh, something they think of as a simple summer job to make some money to get by, it may have some real value to them in terms That's of true. in terms of helping with the skills to have that, that career goal in the future. And it teaches them that you just don't fall into a high paying career. Mm -hmm. right. you, know, you have to work towards it. I mean, some, some people do, I suppose, depending on how they, you know, grew up and the experiences that they've had. But most people, you have to work towards something, mm -hmm. and uh, that's valuable. Right. I thought it was, it was kind of funny because in that class I was teaching, it was about the career mapping, about how to get there. Okay, so you want to be uh, an engineer or a contractor or a doctor or whatever it may be. Okay, we've put that at the top, but you're here, so what steps are we going to take to get there? And the analogy we used uh, was, you know, if you get in the car today and you want to go to California, how are you going to know 
how to get there. And they all said, oh, you plug it in the GPS. So short, <laughs> you know, that's right. Mm -hmm. yes. And then I said, and then I would say, what if the GPS said, drive west and figure it out? <laughs> you know, and they all laugh. And the, the example was, okay, so you want to be this, this nurse or doctor or contractor, figure it out. Yeah. You know, that didn't, that wasn't quite, you know, you really had to think about, you need some direction. Sure. You know. Oh, that's so and, valuable. And it's a huge interesting piece, too, is, is as, as I said earlier, things have changed so much to a technology-based world that um, I think one of the things that happens more often than not is, is is kids skip over the simple things like how to balance your checking account because they go online and it kind of happens for you. You check to make sure that everything um, are legitimate transactions and that you have enough Which money. Which I love, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> but that being said, um, kids oftentimes don't have the basic tools so that if that technology isn't there, how can I still function? What can I do? And we talk a lot about that when they come to the bank that, oh yeah, technology is great when everything is working well. And then they meet with our IT person and she says, oh, here's the, um, you know, here here is our room where I control all of the banks and when one thing goes bad, here's what we have to do as backup mechanisms. So you have to have some skills and knowledge. You can't just rely on technology. That's true because, I mean, we've all been to the bank when they say, well, our computer's oh, down yeah. today. Everyone's so. so happy when we say that. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Lovely. I'm talking with Rhonda Hebert and Chris Dwyron and they are with Biddeford Savings Bank. Where do you see this course going in the future? How to do your banking? Well, one of the most satisfying pieces is since we've started it, as I said, in Kennebunk, um, you know, the, the school board and the faculty saw the importance of it, and, and it's now part of their curriculum. Um, we're hoping that many more schools do the same. The tools are there. Um, the bank is providing them. We're, we're helping to facilitate the teachers and give some, some hands-on experience and um, you know, to, to bring it to life, so to speak, mm -hmm. rather than just handing everybody a book and saying, oh, you know, just do this. Um, so could a teacher who's listening now mm -hmm. get in touch with the bank? Absolutely. And find out how to get it done? And That's then exactly what we hope for. Mm -hmm. To the board. Absolutely. Same thing with the junior achievement? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, it's, its success is dependent upon, uh, you know, one, it's the volunteers. So anyone who's watching or listening, who has any desire, please come forward, contact Junior Achievement. Maybe a, someone love. who wanted to be a teacher but Absolutely. never went to college sure. to be a teacher. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so that the volunteer need is always there, and as well as, um, you know, teachers. You know, some teachers just aren't aware that something like this exists. Right. Um, so if it's, you know, like I said earlier, either a teacher hears about it and requests it in the classroom, or it can start through a volunteer. Mm -hmm. A volunteer can come forward and say, uh, my child has Mrs. Smith for a teacher. I want to go in and volunteer with Mrs. Smith to bring junior achievement in that classroom. It can start through the volunteer sure. as well. Sure. Um, but th that's, that's critical. It's awareness for the teachers as well as volunteers. You know, this is so crucial because we hear the skills gap is out there. We've got the schools saying we're doing a great job teaching, and we've got the business community saying, well, we're not finding enough talented, skilled workers to fill our positions. So somewhere in the middle there, there's, there's a disconnect. Mm -hmm. And I think if we can get our kids with the foundation of money and business under their belts before they leave school, it's only going to help them become more successful and become more work ready. Sure. Um, and, and then business will be able to thrive, which is what we all absolutely. need here. Yeah, we talk absolutely. so much about, you know, wanting our kids to stay in Maine. Exactly. Uh, well, some parents do. <laughs> yes. I'm a um, yeah, grandparent one. that wants my grandsons <laughs> yeah, to stay I mean, here. You know, we, we do. We, we want them to stay here, and I certainly won't go to get on any kind of a political topic. I think it's just a general consensus that if we can let kids know of all the different opportunities that are here. And I say that not just as it relates to banking. I mean, you know, Chris, I've worked in the commercial area too, and we've been lucky enough to really learn about so many great small businesses in Maine yes. and, and what they need. You know, they, they need skilled people to yes, come they in. Do. Um, you know, my husband's in the, um, you know, trades. And there's going to be a huge gap when you know that 50, 60-year-old 
um, you know, start to retire, kids aren't looking at those as, as viable opportunities. And we've got some fantastic businesses here in Maine that programs like this open their eyes to, yeah, I can make some serious money That's as true. a machinist. Yeah. I can make yeah. some serious money as a plumber. Yes. Um, they don't think of them as glamorous jobs that are they're going to sustain the type of lifestyle that they want to live, and, and it is so not true. It is so not true. It's mm. right, boy. You you need an electrician to come to your house, boy. <laughs> you, you better get out your wallet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this has been fantastic. Where can people reach you to talk about these issues more in depth? Chris? Um, they can find me through Bitterford Savings Bank's website. Um, I believe there's a contact us section where both Rhonda and I can be found with name, phone number, email address, and we'd love to you hear. You found us. Yeah, I did. that's right. I clicked on <laughs> you it. You found us. I it did. was pretty easy. Yeah, it was. So, so that works well, and I know I'd be happy to entertain anyone who wants to know more about junior achievement and how to get involved. And would love to hear mm. interested people, you know. Yeah, as would I. I mean, uh, you know, oftentimes just going to different events that schools host, you hear many people say, um, oh, what do you do? And, you know, what, what, what's your community involvement? And to be quite honest with you, this has been a fantastic resource to meet a lot of people, a lot of kids, a lot of businesses. And everybody wants a piece of it. Parents have asked, you know, wow, my kid's taking that class. You know, well, I want to learn. they might be learning too, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you know. Mm. I mean, when the kids come home and they say, gee, I, I'm learning about entrepreneurship, sure. I've had a lot of parents saying, really, what are you learning? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. And they're thinking, when they say, mom, do you balance your checkbook? Yeah, it's and like, oh, we well, I don't scramble. talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> we all scramble, but um, yeah, it, they're, they're great questions, and like I say, it, it helps tie everybody together, businesses, community, kids, parents, everybody. All to the state of Maine. Sure. Yes, absolutely. Love it. Thanks so much for joining me today, guys. For having Thanks us. for having us. Please Debbie. remember to mind your own business. Absolutely. Oh, sure, we'll do. <laughs> <laughs> and you too, you mind your own business. Come on back next week so I can say it again. <laughs> <laughs>